So as in the full bundle version, or in this case, the single project version of opening uh, the opening titles, you are going to get a uh, grindhouse pack here. And inside there, you are going to see the number one title opener. Okay, now all your assets are going to be within these folders here. The full uh, timeline of the title opener is going to be right here, opening credits 1080p. Okay, so if you double click on that, you're going to see the the uh, the entire layout right here. So as we can see, the um, comps and pre comps are just all laid out. If you just double click right in the source there, it's going to take you inside this comp. So as always, you're going to see your controllers for this comp. So again, the lens grind mixer is just going to allow you to add some grime to the uh, the shot here. The focus and weaving is going to give it that jittery effect. So we have the focus and weaving, and if you don't want that, you can simply turn that off. Okay, and that's going to disengage the weaving effect. Um, but I would keep it at the default settings because it can get really spastic and I think it's got the proper settings You can tool around with the uh, the jittering and, and weave them out But I would probably leave it, but if you don't want to just simply shut it off right here Okay, next is going to be this film gate wobble the controller here. I'm going to start at zero So if you bump this number up more you can really get a it's a pretty cool effects. If I if I went ridiculous to something like 155, let me just delete this. Okay, you can see at that those points right there, you get a really fast jitter, and you can elongate that animation as well. But that's the film gate wobble, and again, you're gonna see these controllers throughout each project. But I thought I'd mention them just in case you don't go into every project of the uh, Grindhouse collection. Next is the camera quake, and this is really gonna affect the, uh, the 3D camera. So if we highlight that really quick, I'm gonna go into the controller here, and we're gonna play with the velocity and the motion value. So we wanna animate these two values here. So if we go into the uh, camera quake controller, just for a second so you can see what's going on, so I'm just going to start these at zero, make a keyframe, and I'll probably just go down about a second, half a second. Start to increase these values here. And you can see as I start to take that motion value, it's really going to uh, shake the camera. And I'm going to bring it back down to zero here. So we can see that little quake happening. You know, play around with that. So that's the camera quake controller. And then the camera zoom, so you can simply just animate this camera. Okay, and that's just gonna uh, control the function of the, the camera zoom. And then we have the sprocket controller. So in the sprocket controller, we want to control this sprocket controller value. So it's set at zero. So if I make a keyframe here, and then let's just say I change that to two, or you can also do the negative value. You can see it's just going to start to give that effect of the film control going off the sprocket. And I want to set this back down to zero. So when we go back and play that, it's going to have this blur uh, added to it too. So you're going to see this uh, directional blur is going to be affected by the uh, the speed. So play around with that. Okay, so in this title comp here, we are just going to look at these three pre-comps quick and then we'll move uh, deeper. So we have the scratch mat here. If you want to change the scratch mat in any scratch mat pre-comp, uh, simply just double click inside. So here's the scratch mat pre-comp. Now probably the easiest way since there's so many uh, mats and, and pre-comps within each project, I think in this case uh, just to find a file quickly you could simply just right click 
on the file and just say reveal layer source in project. So it's going to bring you to the scratch mat folder. So we can simply, I can eye this off and drop in another scratch mat, or you can double it up, stack it up. Now you can see in this case, what happens is this flicker, this, this particular mat starts, you know, maybe a second into the, uh, the shot and we can just right click, go to time, enable time remapping. And this is going to be our, uh, our time for which the scratch mat goes, but we can now just set a keyframe at this start point here. And then I'm just going to delete this and move this point again, which is our startup point to the beginning of this pre comp. So now you could simply just kind of go down towards the end of the pre comp. We're just going to speed it up a little bit. So now if we go back into the main title here, okay, we can see that we're kind of starting to get a little bit of a different look here. And more than likely with these scratch mats, since they were shot off real projectors, you know, you may decide you want to just get uh, rid of the edging here. So if we go back into the scratch mat here, hit the letter S and we could scale this up a little bit. And then that way it just cleans up the edges, but you don't have to, it's purely a, uh, you know, designer choice. So now moving into change this text, we just simply want to double click going to the placeholder. And as you can see, you could just shift the color a little bit. You could add a little bit of color here. You could change the tint if you wanted to, if you were going to give it more of a reddish tint. Then is the text pre-comp. So this is simply where you want to change your text. And that's it. So let me just close these out quick. And we're going to move down to another title sequence part. So I'm going to move down to the actual uh, Grindhouse title here. And you could see in the preview that there was the images in place inside the text. So again, we want to double click inside this comp here. Again, all the same controllers, color presets, lens, grind mixer, so on and so forth. Scratch mat whether you choose to put it on or take it off. Uh, but the main title pre-comp here, okay, that's where the title sits. We can double click and here's our title. Double click onto the text comp, the smaller fonts here. And then you have the big, what I call power title. Okay, it's your big title with the imagery inside it. We can double click in there and we can change this to wh whatever you would change it to. So now when we come back, of course this changes, but now the imagery and the texture that you see within the title, you can simply go to this image mat here, double click, and it's just going to tell you to make sure you place your imagery with inside this, uh, this frame here. So I'm just going to import some images in here for one second. So now once we start to add some image, again, we just want to stay within the boundaries here. So if I were just to uh, drag and drop underneath here, and again, you can kind of rotate them however you wish. Hit R for rotate. Just kind of make it a little bit unorthodox, I guess.
And of course, you can mask out shapes and cut around just to not give it such a, a picture type of feel. So you go in and get a pen tool. Just kind of. Yeah, something like that. So now when we go back into the change text, you're gonna see how things are starting to look. And of course you wanna scale them down to fit, you know, how you like. We start to see the imagery start uh, moving through here. If I change this to a, a full, more clear image than the resolution I was working at. Again, to kind of smooth out your workflow, especially for this project, I'll probably keep it down third to a quarter. Okay, so moving on to the last part of the uh, opening credits here. It's the badass cinema text. So you get into the habit, double click, get inside the comp, and hopefully you just start to become familiar of this top portion here, which is going to be all your controllers, as you can see. Just for the flexibility factor, I popped them into every comp I could. Uh, and, and again, scratch mat, placeholder, displacement map. So again, everything I try to structure uh, to be to make you familiar and uh, to simplify changing things quickly. So if we go in the placeholder, we have our credits here. So if we double click, we're going to have our title splash, which is going to be the badass cinema. Double click and you can just change your text right in there. My movie. Okay, and then this part here, we have our credit scroll. So double click and, and our credit scroll, if we zoom out, which you can hit the control minus on your keyboard. Okay, you can see that We have this uh, elongated pre-comp here. You can simply just go in, change the text how you feel, see fit. And that's pretty much it. So again, I do want to note that number two, we have our mats. And I did go into the um, reduce uh, I'm sorry, I did go into removing the unused footage here. That way it kind of trimmed down the bulk of the project. So do remember, not all your mats from the bundle are going to be contained inside the, uh, the, the single project files uh, due to the fact that the point was to trim these projects down so you could work faster and it didn't take eons to, to load up. So you will need to import the ones that are not uh, inside the actual project being used. So anything that was not used inside the project I, I removed. So don't forget if you need to bring it back in. And then finally we have our render. Going back to the render concept, we have our render booster, 1080p, 720p, and again just to uh, reiterate this should help speed things along. But you should find that uh, you know, uh, this particular project shouldn't take too long. What's going to eat up some render time, of course, is going to be the scratch mats, things like that. So you can always switch them off, not use the scratch mats, pop it in Premiere later on if you choose to, or Final Cut Pro.